Okay, if this does not showcase the remarkable power of frequency and vibration, then I don't know what will. Check this out. So first, the Clodney plate. This incredible tool demonstrates that all frequencies and vibrations are not just invisible waves of energy. And in fact, they manifest their own unique pattern beyond our level of awareness. And then this is where your mind actually gets blown. This is a Clodney plate in three dimensions. And this showcases the power of sound, frequency, and vibration as it is literally levitating and moving matter around. Who knows, maybe this is how the pyramids were constructed. And guess what? No forms of matter are off limits. All forms can be manipulated, including electrical material, and wood, and iron, and plastic, and even liquid. So remember, if you want to learn about the secrets of the universe, think in terms of frequency, energy, and vibration, my friends. They have held the secret knowledge the ancient music by which the pyramids were constructed based on the math. All of the universe is constructed according to these nine tones. They knew about them. In fact, they instituted, in fact, it was the Rockefeller Foundation in 1939 that instituted the world's standard tuning. The Western world tunes to A440 Hertz frequency. That when you tune your instrument to that, the F sharp note is 741 precisely the a440 is what now is the standard tuning if you go a439 you're closer to one of the creator's tones if you go a441 you're closer to one of the creator's original tones that's how precisely it has been manipulated to do what to shut down the 95 percent of your brain particularly the right brain that operates the heart-mind for the divine human community. Here is a metaphor so that you begin to understand what we're talking about. When you go driving your car and your channel on the radio is tuned to a station and you're grooving to the music, you love that music, as you get farther and farther away from the broadcasting tower, that music gets static. You start to lose the signal from the clear channel, broad class, and it gets staticky. When it gets staticky, you get a little annoyed. But you want to listen to it. You really have a heart for that music. So you continue to listen to it for another 10, 15 miles, and suddenly it becomes so annoying that you just get disgusted. You go, ah, and you shut it off. And if you continue to listen to it, you get sick. That's what we're talking about here. Except you don't even know that you've been listening to the static your whole life. You don't even know what the true resonant frequency is because it has been kept from you. So in other words, the master composer, master conductor of the Universal Orchestra is singing love songs in 528, uplifting everything simultaneously. And we're the only species out of tune and accepting static for the clear child. Dr. Masaru Emoto, he goes up on stage and he has a, a triangular, you know, a musical triangle that he hits, in, like in an orchestra. He's hitting it over here, he hits it, bing! This right here, bro, this what you want me to explain? You want me to explain magic to you, huh? All right, well, let's get to it, but make sure you hit that follow. This diagram is showing you a chromatic scale in five octaves starting on C. The letters circled represent his circle of fifths and fourths. You can see it better when I circle them in purple. All these lines connect the tritones. Now you have all the tritones at a circle of fifths. These numbers suggest sharps and flats, right? I say that because... G has one sharp, and his tritone, D flat, or C sharp, has seven sharps. I guess he was pressed for space because these don't really match up like that. The pentagram underneath connects all C's in each octave. Now, why did I say this was this? Because this scales down to this, which scales down to this. See, even he knows about it. But this reminds me of this, which is another cool way to show this, which leads us back to this. File for more!
Less than 60 seconds, I'm going to go through the six main sound frequencies that promote healing in your mind, body, and your energy. The best part about these is you can just listen to them in the background on YouTube and you'll still experience the benefits. The first one is 396 hertz. Now this frequency is best to listen to if you're trying to release low vibrational emotions like guilt or fear. 417 hertz is known for facilitating change in your life and releasing all negative energy in yourself and your home. Now one of the most powerful ones is 528 hertz which is known for miracles, transformation and restoring and repairing your DNA. 528 hertz is also known as the love tone as well which heals your heart. 639 hertz has to do with healing relationships. 741 hertz has to do with expressing your truth and releases toxins. Today I feel prompted to speak about jealousy. Look where it sits on the chart. There's some scrolls about jealousy and it's why I make a declaration that jealousy is not welcome in my house. As you can see, jealousy doesn't travel alone. Look at this scroll from the Wisdom of Solomon. Check in to your own feelings. If you're shooting out arrows of jealousy towards another, you want to be careful with that because it might just bounce back. The old saying, green with envy, must relate to holding jealousy within the heart region. Here's a much better heart affirmation. 5 to 8 hertz frequency has been determined to be nearly the percenter of the entire electromagnetic color spectrum. There's only one number, only one number in the entire numbering system whereby the electromagnetic color spectrum is the same as the sound system. That one number is 528. Both the same in color and sound. 528 hertz frequency. A miraculous key that opened doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. 528. It will change your life in the most beneficial way. And now we have substantive evidence, massive amounts of evidence that that is what 528 is. Ultimately, what has happened with this planet is that we are in dissonance to another note, another frequency. It turned out that when we discovered the original musical scale, there was not just six, but a total of nine core creative frequencies to the universe. That is, everything in the universe is made from nine notes, only nine. And that the first six are the sofeggio, and then there's three additional ones that form a perfect circle of sound. And that perfect circle of sound looks something like this. If you graph it. So the first six notes, 396, 417, 528, 639, 741, 852, was the original sofeggio scale. The 528 that you can see on my left in green is the color green. It's the heart of the rainbow. That's the miracle note from the original solfeggio note, from the original solfeggio scale. And the other note that you see, 741, which is part of nature, is called the devil's interval in musicology. That when you play 741 with 528, it creates such an annoying and dissonant energy, diseasing, stressful, that if you continue to listen to it, you could die. And so that the concept here is interesting. In the world today, we have people who are controlling virtually everything economically, geopolitically. Their agenda has been population manipulation, population control for millennia. They have held the secret knowledge the ancient music by which the pyramids were constructed based on the math all of the universe is constructed according to these nine tones they knew about them in fact they instituted in fact it was the rockefeller foundation in 1939 that instituted the world's standard tuning the western world tunes to a 440 hertz frequency that when you tune your instrument to that the f sharp note is 741 precisely So we search the U.S. patent database and we find this invention by a physician, Dr. James Bear of Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's called a resonant frequency therapy device. 
and its purpose is to induce a resonant vibration in a living organism or cell. If I put in, say, 100 hertz, out will come 100 pulses per second. If I put in 200 hertz, we'll get 200 pulses. So now we're searching for the magic frequency. And we start with 100 hertz, and we look through the microscope to see if anything's happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. So we try 101 hertz. We look through the scope for five minutes, and nothing happens. So we try 102, 103, and so on. Over the course of 15 months, we try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. The answer is you have to have two input frequencies, one low, one high, and the higher frequency must be 11 times the lower. It's what we musicians would call the 11th harmonic. When we add the 11th harmonic, we begin to shatter microorganisms like a crystal glass. These are the first videos taken we showed these videos to our friends in the biology department. They said they hadn't seen anything quite like it. Seems to be a new phenomenon. These organisms are being shattered by our electronic signals. We now know that cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and also dies. Leukemia cell number three then tries to make another cancer cell. The new cell is shattered and the original cell dies. Is that the Anunnaki around the tree of life and a flying spacecraft above it? Or are those giants around a lightning rod emitting frequencies that's causing this machine to levitate? That thing on their wrist sure looks like a cymatic depiction. These are cymatic frequencies, sound made visible, and these are different magnetrons. These are the windows on the cathedrals. They look similar. What if that wristwatch is a signature, a vibrational frequency depicting the location for where they teleport from? And what's in that bag? Or is it a bucket? Different vibrational frequencies produce different structures. See the similarity? Maybe this doesn't represent the seeding of life. Maybe this is a technological map. How else do you explain this? What if you can travel from one location to another using that signature, that vibrational frequency? What if cathedrals were not built for religion, rather for science? They're all kind of built the same way. They've got the antenna, they've got the domes, they've got the hexagon water structures inside. Did you know that stained glass windows is a form of color therapy? Did you know that organs is a form of vibrational sound therapy? When you're inside a structure like that, you are resonating the sound throughout your body, applying that with the lights coming through. You are literally healing yourself, plus the intention believing that you are getting help from a higher power. That is actually you. Your belief plus the location plus the structure equals healing. Are those electrical maps? Our ionosphere is full of electricity. Every hundred feet, you gain more. These antennas draw power. These structures harness them. Then we have these labyrinths on the grounds that look like processors on computers. This is the true yellow brick road. We are harnessing energy and storing them in bricks covered in gold because bricks hold electricity with the Emerald City acting as the battery. They could also have been using these to structure their water. Either way, there is a lot of hidden history 
ancient technologies from our very recent past that has been recently reset. If you want to know more, look up the Tartarian Empire. So I need to show you this video that I found. When I lived in London, I any club worth its salt would have these function one sound systems. I didn't know anything about them. I just kind of took for granted that they were what everyone uses. Only recently I wanted to look it up, learn more about it. And I found this video of the founder and he's just such a character and he has such strong opinions. All right, look, I'll just play it. The, the digital world has not bought better sound. That is complete and utter rubbish. It's actually made it worse. Um, we are now stuck with this dreadful MP3, which most of the DJs use. Um, it's not real sound. It's, a, it's, if you like, it's a toy. It's not a professional. Um, I can't believe everybody uses it. Uh, a lot of the sound systems out there today are so bad that you can't even tell the difference, but you can on ours. Anything less than, you know, what we are capable of perceiving is, um, is an insult, actually. And MP3s are a very big in insult, I would say. It's incredible how architects um, pay no attention to um, the acoustic properties of what, they're, of what they're doing. And I mean, just if there are any architects happen to see this, I would like to point out that the, the human audio system can discern information down to 15 to 20 millionths of a second which is 2,000 times more refined than the visual sense, which only needs 30 frames per second to believe there's a continuum. If you've got something slower than 15 millionths of a second, the ear can sort that out, and that's how it does it. Why do you think we got 360 degree perception in audio that never switches off? If you're one of these modern wine bars that, um, that actually sound like a large bathroom, quite a lot of them, then if you've been in there for a few hours, your brain is constantly trying to unscramble all the information. Well, this uses a lot of processing power and it tires you out. Uh, and listening to a bad sound system will tire you out. When it's clean and clear and it's nicely produced and you've got a huge landscape of sound in front of you, it's a very uplifting, uh, or even spiritual experience and I think this is very very important and it's a part of the music and the, the sound that um, maybe there was more awareness of um, you know 30 years ago you know I like to I like to remem remember what Shakespeare said which was that music is the food of love worth remembering but a hundred pure watts of sound is actually enough to kill you This is just one of the reasons why they removed the bells during World War II. The old world knew the healing properties of frequency and vibration. And that wouldn't do for this new world order we have. We must remain dependent on the petroleum-based medications that are prescribed to us. The addictive and deadly with many side effects. But there was a better way. As Tesla said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, you must think in terms of frequency and vibration. Just one more thing lost to us in our hidden history. Research the mud flood and fall of Tartaria. Dig up our past. Question everything, friends.
the effect of this the Curran's frequency. Voices that are in 440 frequency. Now, it was Rothschild that painted this. So it keeps everybody on edge. Now, what this is a gomini meter, and what it is, this is what your the voices will sound like. So this is our frequency. See? Yeah. So that middle, that middle part well, is fuzzy this, up. This is what sounds are doing to your body. This is what it's doing to the water and the minerals and the salt and everything in your body. Right? It's keeping you on edge. Let's talk about frequency. So drums and instruments have an effect on your body. And the frequency that they use is 440. And that always keeps you on edge and frustrated. You've seen the artist XXX, how he said that they could use any frequency to make you sleep, to make you happy, to make you sad. SubhanAllah, guess what the frequency for the Quran is? It's 432. 432 is the earth tone. And that's a healing tone. And subhanAllah, when they do the math for it, it's infinity. The frequency of 432, which for me is more spiritual than the prayer itself, because mm -hmm. this is a healing tone. Oh, no, it's not even moving. So it has no bad effect whatsoever.